Hi guys, Virtus Education here with the 29th video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series. And in this episode, I'm going to be going over artificial intelligence in its most uh, basic form. So, I just want to put a quick disclaimer out here. Uh, I'm only going to be going over some of the basic stuff. I'm not necessarily going to be going over some of the more complex, kismet-based um spawn you know uh artificial intelligence and so on using uh, uh spawn active factories and all that stuff i'm just going to be going over some initial stuff with spawn points i'm going to be going over some uh, stuff with path nodes and i'm also going to be showing you how to actually add some bots into your scene which you can uh mess around with shoot do whatever you want so i've actually compiled a brief uh demo of what we're going to be doing in this episode so i'm just going to quickly go above this water here I'm gonna go ahead and press play and you're gonna notice something rather different so previously we've been spawning from exactly where uh, we left off in the editor however this time I've actually spawned somewhere um, that I've actually chosen so if I go over here which is where I spawned we've got a little player start here and we can use this to make the player start in a certain location as opposed to making them start somewhere random uh, and it, you know, essentially allows us to place the player where we want to at the very start of a level rather than them starting in the middle, you know, the end or, you know, out of the map or anything like that. So let's just go back into this and see what else we have in store. So as you saw there, we just, um, we just spawned. However, I'm going to be doing something else now. I'm going to be adding a bot into the scene, which I'll be showing you how to do. And you will notice that it's actually going around a set path which I pre-programmed using path nodes. So hopefully, if he doesn't see me, he'll be going around that, and you'll actually be able to see that path node in action, uh, going around it, and then you'll be able to see it change from its uh, path node nav mesh to uh, you know attacking me. So let's just go ahead and do this. I'm going to type in add bots one to add in a bot quickly. Uh, and he's seen me. Okay, that's not good. So hopefully, if he stops seeing me, he will run back. So I'm going to have to quickly restart this here because he has seen me. So I'm just going to quickly press play. Uh, and I'm going to try add him in again, and hopefully we can see him in action running to the uh, path node. So, just add him in, there we go, and he should start running towards it, and you can see him running there, he's running backwards and forth, and that's kind of how path nodes work. We can actually compile uh, slightly bigger path nodes, uh, but path node systems, so we can make him go around the entire level, uh, but for now he's just going backwards and forwards from his start point to uh, the path node which we placed, and you can see there that he's actually just seen me, and now he's actually deciding to shoot me and so on, and even if I run off in a certain direction, go out of his sight, he will then move to the last location that he actually saw me. So if I just give this a few seconds, uh, he should be getting real close. And there we go, and just started running towards me. And this is just some of the stuff which we're going to be going over in this episode. So let's start off by uh, I'm going to start off by deleting pretty much all the different uh, spawn and path stuff, pathing stuff that I have in my scene. So let's just go ahead and delete this. Also, I advise that you do delete any p uh, player starts you have in your scene already, because I I believe the template maps do come with one player start. You don't really want to lose that, and it can really be a real annoyance uh, if you don't delete it from the very start. So let's we'll start off by going over what I showed you uh, initially in the form of getting the player to start in a certain location. This is actually one of the most easiest tasks tasks for. Um, uh, the pathing stuff. So to do this, all you got to do is just go ahead and right click, add actor, and player start. That's all you need to do is just add a player start. There is another way you can add this. Just go ahead and go to the content browser, go to actor classes, and then it should be in navigation, and you should be able to find uh, spawn point uh, somewhere. There it is. And we can just pretty much drag this in like that which is pretty cool also you will notice you may have something here saying bad size if it does say that all you need to do is just make sure that you take it out of the ground and make sure it's not clipping into anything else and it should go back to normal how it looks right now so if you want to make this to if we want to make this the uh, first location for the player to spawn in all we got to do is make sure it's enabled so it can actually be used we got to make sure primary start is selected and this will make it the very first uh sorry the primary start node so uh when you start opening it up it will check for the primary start and it will go there if you don't want a 
spawn point to be the primary star all you gotta do is just uncheck it and those will be used for AI and so on and also we have something under here called team index uh, so for example if you was to have a uh, a game where you've got an enemy team and a ally team for example the player would be the ally the enemy team would be uh, you know the enemy what we do is we set the ally team to zero and then the enemy team to one uh, if we wanted to add another team, we can set it to 2, 3, 4, etc, and etc. This is just really to um, make sure certain spawns are only used by certain teams. So you don't have the uh, the enemy team starting to spawn in um, you know, the ally places, for example, the primary start, and coming up behind the player and so on. So that's just something to keep in mind there. So let's just go ahead and test this now. So I'm just going to quickly press play, and hopefully... It should work just like that. However, it shouldn't really be working. Every time we do make a change to our pathing, we need to uh, make sure that we build the paths. Similar to how whenever you make uh, geometrical changes with BSP or when you make changes to the lighting, you've got to build it uh, so it can be updated. The reason why it's working at the moment is because I previously had a spawn point here. Uh, but what we need to do is just make sure we uh, build it every time we make a change. So to do this, let's go ahead and go up to the top center here and press build and then paths and make sure you do the same for build cover nodes as well. This is just a precaution. And hopefully now if we just go ahead and press play, uh, it will make a spawn just like that which is pretty cool. Also, you should you should get these nice, lovely um, uh, green arrow, uh, green lines pointing between the different nav uh, navigation points. So let's go ahead and add a few more spawn points now. But this time, this time we're going to be making them for the the um, the enemy team. So let's just go ahead and add uh, a few player starts here. Let's go drag them up a little bit, and I'm going to be putting two on each side of this area here, and and um, yeah, so keep in mind you don't have to place your spawns in a set location. You can place them anywhere you lo or anywhere you want, as long as they're not really clipping into anything. Also, something you may want to take into account for uh, artificial intelligence is you might want to put them into your plans so you can plan out your player movement, where the uh, play uh, where the AI are going to go, cover systems, and so on and so forth. I didn't really go over that in too much in my planning uh, video, but it's definitely something you want to take into account so you can make sure it's all balanced you can make sure you've got decent pathing going on in your level before you even start it and uh, yeah so as I said earlier we don't really want these to be the uh, the primary start we don't want the player spawning at any of these really so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and select them all go to player start properties and we're gonna set the team index to 1 and we're gonna change the primary start to uh, off so the, re uh, the reason why I changed team index to 1 is because I want this to be the enemy team rather than me spawning there. So, yeah. So, if I go ahead and press start now, uh, we can actually spawn in some bots. However, they won't really be doing much. So, I'll just go ahead and add bots 1. If it cannot see me, it's simply going to kill itself. It will die and commit suicide. Either that or it simply won't work at all. So, what I need to do now is I need to make sure that it uh, that we have some sort of pathing system so if it can't see anything it won't simply kill itself and it's gonna go start wandering around so what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna run around this corner here and then I'm gonna spawn the bots and hopefully you should see that the bots will begin to bug out they won't do anything and they'll, pro they'll pretty much just die so let's just do this quickly add bots 1 and hopefully it shouldn't be doing anything it's just standing pretty much exactly where it is, standing still, not doing anything, because it can't really do anything. So what we need to do is kind of give it some kind of objective to do. Uh, in this case, we're going to be setting that objective as uh, moving to a certain point. If it has that, it's going to move between uh, that point and the play starts looking for an enemy to shoot, to seeing as that is its primary objective. So let's go ahead and start making this sort of navigation system which we've talked about. So let's go ahead and go to right click go to add actor and then we're gonna add something called a path node so if I go ahead and quickly build paths you can see that we should have this green arrow this is showing uh, the navigation point where the uh, where the stuff will go for some reason it's starting to pick up the terrain as a navigation point but when we have more and more of these it will uh, it will work properly so with this done 
if I go ahead and spawn around here, after I've built, uh, built the paths again, it should begin to run backwards and forwards uh, in that set place. So let's just go ahead and do this. And I'm going to run quickly around the corner. And when we do add it, you'll see that it does exactly what we want. So, for example, let's say if we wanted to set up a system where it goes only down an alleyway, we can do that with path nodes rather than making it wander aimlessly. Or if we don't want it to see the player unless the player is in a certain location, we can do that. So, let's just go ahead and press add bots 1, and we're going to add this guy in, and it should start moving towards that path which it's doing so see we can have a little look at it we can't see it but there we go you can see there just before it started shooting me it was actually moving towards the path node and it's pretty much doing its job so that's just the basics of navigation inside of UEK so there is a few different things we can play around with inside of the path node properties we can actually uh, turn it off and on or we can also change the um, the order in which the AI go to certain path nodes. So for example we can make it go to one here before it goes to one there or something along those lines. You can probably guess what that does but uh, it's just some of the things you can play around with. So there is a few different objective types for the AI inside of UDK. Uh, you know those being the path nodes so you can tell it what to do if it can't find it. Uh, you can also you can also have it look for weapon pickups and any other stuff you've left on the ground uh, and most importantly while it while it's going through those its primary objective is going to be to kill the player uh, with the current co uh, with the current uh, UT pawn code so let's just go ahead and uh, reiterate on what we've gone in over in this episode so firstly we went over how to use the spawn point setting up the primary starts to start in a certain location we also went over uh, setting up some uh, spawn points for enemy teams so they only spawn there and lastly we went over some basic navigation uh, doing this stuff now keep in mind as I said there's loads and loads of other AI stuff that we can actually do inside of UDK for example we can do some of the more complex stuff in Kismet so I advise that you check that up on UDN or, or anywhere or any other resources you might find for AI because AI is a really really amazing topic and mastering it takes quite some time so thanks for watching comment like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video